Live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio at the beautiful Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel, it's The Bottom Line with Jacqueline Sheldon on Business Radio X. Maximize your return on investment by reducing your tax bill. Get ready for the best tax talk you've ever had. It's The Bottom Line, presented by Bottom Line Tax Solutions. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Bottom Line with Jacqueline Sheldon, the best tax talk you've ever had. Hello, Jacqueline. Hi, Tom. How are you? I am doing well. How are you? Oh, I am always well. We've got an exciting show today. I can't wait to jump into it. Uh, It's summertime. How's your summer going? Summer's going well. I can't believe that uh, we're almost halfway through the year already, and it will be uh, tax time again before you know it. You've got a big July 4th uh, party scheduled? We have kind of a busy weekend for July 4th, but looking forward to it, taking a little break out of the office for a few days. Oh, come on. Accountants never take a break. <laughs> so, so it seems. But so it seems. So it seems. We've got an exciting show today, but before we get into that, I've been meaning to talk to you and I wanted to say something to you. Okay. Uh, you remember my friend from Maysville? I do remember your friend from Maysville, Tom. It seems like every time you bring him up, there's always a problem associated with him. So do I dare ask? Well, they're, they're going to put that on his uh, tombstone, I think, if he ever dies. Uh, he'll probably outlive us all. But uh, well, my friend from Maysville, you remember a few months ago he had a huge unexpected tax liability because he didn't come to see you for a tax plan. Yes, I do remember that story. And that when he filed his taxes, he was a little surprised with the amount of taxes that he owed when he filed his return. I, I think it was a mild heart attack they diagnosed him with after that. But but guess what? Guess what now? Okay, what now? He didn't pay all the taxes months ago, and now he's getting letters from you-know-who. Okay. That, and not Santa Claus. Yeah, that tends to happen if you don't pay your tax liability. You get some nice little love letters uh, from the IRS wanting to know where your money is. They want their money. Exactly. Where's our money? Uh, he's panicking, of course. Oh, yeah. And uh, knowing him, he uh, did the smart thing and, and just stuck the envelope in the bottom desk drawer of his office desk um not not a good idea but that's probably what he did so do you see a lot of this a lot of people running into this well we do um the irs recently released a study saying that they had over 14 million cases currently in the collections division so that's quite a few that's a lot and that one in every 60 taxpayers has a back tax liability. So chances are everybody knows someone who... That's like 2% of taxpayers. ...has a tax liability. It's not something that people talk about a lot, but chances are everybody knows somebody that is dealing with a back tax issue with the IRS. Uh, the cases I generally see are usually 1099 contractors or other self-employed individuals or taxpayers who, for whatever reason, haven't filed returns in several years, uh, they'll end up with a large balance that's accrued over the years and penalties and interest on top of that for not filing. So that's usually the cases that I see. Snowball effect. It just gets bigger. It is a snowball effect. I met, behind. I talked with someone a couple weeks ago, and they kind of had that s- same situation. They didn't file their 2014 return. They had somebody prepare it, and there was a balance due. And they didn't have the money to pay it, so they didn't file 14. And then 15 rolled around, and they're like, well, if we didn't have the money to pay 14, we're not going to have the money to pay 15. So they didn't file 15, and then they didn't file 16, and you can see where the story's going. So now we have 14 through 2018 that's got to be filed. And once everything is um, prepared and uh, shakes out what their balance is, then we'll deal with what options that they might have for paying those back taxes but hopefully they will have some options oh, there are there are some options we're going to talk a little bit about that here good 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 uh, just hearing all that scares me to death I, I imagine all this is pretty scary for the person holding that letter from the irs well receiving an irs notice can be pretty scary i've had clients who have brought me in a bag full of irs letters that they haven't opened i've, <laughs> I've had clients that's walked in holding them by the corner of the envelope like it's a ticking time bomb that's <laughs> don't waiting even to look explode. at it <laughs> exactly so it can be a pretty scary thing but the worst thing someone can do if they receive a notice from the irs is to ignore it and that it's what it sounds like your friend from Maysville maybe did yeah. if you didn't respond to it. That's the worst thing you can do. I think he said something about, I ain't going to do nothing, or I don't know. He's, he's, he's quite the individual. But if you ignore it, you may be ignoring it, but the IRS is not. No, they're not going to ignore it. It's not something out of sight, out of mind. 
uh, situation. You throw that letter in your bottom desk drawer, and then a few weeks later, you'll get another letter, and then a few weeks later, another, and eventually, you'll have someone knocking at your door. They'll show up at your door? They will if you uh, don't answer or don't respond to the letters that they send you. Not exactly a social call. And not a social call at all. Wow. You said something about uh, just now about options, options. They do have options, I hope. Hopefully they have options. It was, so when someone finds themselves in this situation, they're getting letters. Hopefully we haven't got to the point of someone showing up at their door, but what kind of options may they have? Well, the first option that they can look at is setting up a payment plan, and that's what the IRS refers to as an installment agreement. And this will allow the taxpayer to pay their tax balance over a, a period of time. And the IRS does have a short-term payment plan, which will allow people to pay for a period of up to 120 days. And then they also have longer-term options where you can actually make payments over 36 all the way up to 72 months on your uh, tax balance. So that's always uh, something to consider. Now, if the taxpayer owes less than 50000 it's pretty simple to get a installment agreement set up but if the balance with the taxes penalty and interest is more than 50,000 then it is a little harder the IRS does require what's called a collections information statement now that that sounds important now the collection what did you just say collections, collections information, information statement. statement that is something that an individual doesn't need to do you, they need to have someone do that for them like yourself right and it is a specific, it sounds important it's an IRS form that you're required to complete. So it's send, a legal document, and basically. And send backup documentation to kind of prove what your income and expenses are. And that allows the IRS to be able to determine what they think your ability to repay your tax debt is. I got you. I got you. And I'm, I'm guessing you threw out the number 50000 $50,000. If it's more than that, it gets a little more complicated. Well, it does. That's when that collections information statement uh, is required to get a payment plan set up. Another thing that taxpayers have to keep in mind if they're going into an installment agreement is they have to be in compliance. There's that word again. Right. We talk about compliance a all lot. All the time. But basically that means that all their tax filings are up to date. So if their 2018 return is extended, they need to get that 2018 return filed. And then they need to make sure that they are dealing with this year's estimated tax payments or if they're a W-2 employee that they're having enough withheld out of their paycheck so that they're covering their tax obligations for 2019. The IRS is willing to work with you on back liability, but they want to make sure that you're not continuing to dig a hole each year by not paying it enough. Right, right. So there, there again, compliance, a good set of books. I know you've said that a million times. If you're not current, you can't fix something from the past. Right. It's, it's like trying to put a, a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. You know, you, you need to fix the problem and have it fixed going forward and then you can deal with the back tax issues but the irs wants to see that you have fixed the issue so that you're not you're not continuing to owe year after year after right year. right I'm, I'm with you uh th anytime we uh, involve forms and the irs there's got to be fees there's got to be interest there's got to be something associated with all these arrangements well there's the irs does charge a fee to set up an installment agreement uh, depending on how you set it up it can run anywhere from 31 dollars for what they call a direct debit installment agreement, all the way up to two hundred and twenty-five dollars. So there is a fee to get the plan set That's up. That's all. But then that doesn't sound bad. Yeah, you know, the tax balance is also still subject to penalties and interest. Those continue to accrue during the time you're making these payments. So you've got to keep that in mind as well. Normally, the late paying penalty is one half of one percent each month. But if you set up an installment agreement, the IRS will cut that in half. So you're only paying 025 percent a month on the penalty. And then that caps out once it hits 25%. And then there's also interest, uh, which, you know, the interest rates vary from quarter to quarter. Currently, you're looking at about 6% interest, though, on any balance that you still have with the IRS. Is that good or bad, 6%? It's not bad. If it, You could look at paying off your tax debt with a credit card, but usually credit card interest rates are double digits. You double so, that, yeah. so oftentimes, uh, the IRS interest rate is a less costly option. The thing you just have to watch is those penalties. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, what other options? Anything else? Well, there are other options that are available. There is something called an offer in compromise, which will allow qualified taxpayers to settle their tax debt for less than the amount originally owed. Now, there are some pretty st strict requirements that have to be met for a taxpayer to qualify, 
and the process is very tedious oftentimes it'll take nine months to a year or even longer to get an installment agreement or, i'm sorry an offering compromise in place um, it does require irs financial information to it, so that they can determine your ability to pay and what the irs looks at in this case is what income you have coming in they what expenses you have they will allow you certain amounts for living expenses but nothing over and above certain so the, the new the new mercedes out front may not be an allowable living expense uh no that's it they look at they look and give you some minimum expenses that they will allow you to take but anything over and above that they figure uh, that money could go towards paying your taxes instead of paying for that new mercedes i got you i got uh, you those are good things to know i you know and then they also look at assets what do you own that they could tap into which may mean selling that mercedes or possibly getting a, a loan on your home if you have equity in your house and then they also look at the collection statute and how much time is left that they have to collect this tax debt because from the time the tax is assessed the irs actually has 10 years that they can collect that tax wow so if they feel like you have the ability to pay it over however many years are left in that collection statute then they're not going to accept an offer they're going to wait you out and try to get that money over a period of time so early on they're maybe a little less likely to wheel and deal with you knowing they have that time that's true the closer you get to the end of that collection statute the more likely they're willing to accept an offer but that's a long time to have that hanging over your head it is a long time wow that wow that's that's something else what's the uh, biggest settlement you've ever seen for one of your clients uh, probably the biggest settlement we've had, we had a client that owed just over $100,000 in back taxes, and we were able to settle it out for 10000 so about 10 cents on the dollar, so that wasn't a bad um, Wow. Wow, that, that's like a, a magic act or something you did. Yeah, it took some doing, but we were able to get that uh, negotiated for the taxpayer. That's amazing. How much was that again? Uh, they owed a little over 100000 and we were able to settle it out for ten. For 10000 Wow. And you, you didn't even play a, a funny little jingle to do that. Yep. It just, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm taking shots at people. Forgive me. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a quick break, and we're going to be back in just a moment. Jacqueline, you are sticking around. You're not running off, are you? I will be here. Good deal. Good deal. Folks, we will see you in a moment. Are you paying too much in taxes? Who isn't? Taxes are the highest expense small businesses face. Maximize your return on investment. Reduce your tax bill. Tax planning and tax resolution strategies, the art of keeping more money you've worked hard for. Schedule your free tax planning consultation by visiting www.bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. That's bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. My small business had done well and thought I'd paid my taxes. Then I got a letter from the IRS. I didn't know what to do. So I called Bottom Line Tax Solutions. They understood exactly what I was going through. Bottom Line worked with me and for me. They turned a horrible time into a manageable one. Now, I'm in a payment plan I can afford, and they were able to get my penalties reduced. Schedule your free tax planning consultation by visiting BottomLineTaxSolutions.com. Folks, we are back with the Bottom Line with Jacqueline Shell, and Jacqueline's still here with us. Uh, let's see, in the first segment, we were talking about uh, what uh, brands of, of lick. No, we, were, we, we weren't talking about whiskey. That was my other show. I'm sorry. No, seriously, we were talking about what happens when you get a nasty gram in the mail from the IRS, our dear friends at the IRS, saying, hey, you owe us money, and at we that, want it. At that point, you may need a glass of whiskey. That's when you start listening to the whiskey show. Yes, yes, exactly. But we talked about payment plans. Uh, creating offering compromises, basically trying to work something out with the IRS. Because they, at the end of the day, they will try hard to work with you. They will. They're willing to. Uh, yeah, I, I know the IRS gets a bad rap sometimes, and, and maybe maybe once in a while rightfully so, but they, they will try to work with you. After At, at the end of the day, they have families. They're, they're people, too. We can't forget that, right? That's true. Okay, en- enough uh, sugar and sweetness about the IRS. Jackie, where are you going? Come back here. She's walking <laughs> out. Payment plans, offering compromises. What other options are there? Are there any, any other options? Well, one other thing that we look at when we're meeting with a client is the ability to get them in what the IRS calls currently not collectible status. And basically what that does is it allows a delay in the collections process. 
And this happens when the taxpayer doesn't have enough income coming in to cover their basic living expenses. And generally, this will stop the collections action for about two years, and it gives the taxpayer time to kind of get back on their feet and in a position where they can then start making payments to the IRS. But now that is possibly a way of just kicking it down the road. Well, it is kicking it down the road, but uh, sometimes it's, it's your best option. I had a client last year that uh, was had a downswing in her business and she honestly did not have the ability to make monthly payments so we were able to get her in what's called cnc status so it bought her two years to kind of get her ducks in a row to get her business uh, affairs in order and it also during the cnc status the collection statute continues to run so she was pretty close to the end of that 10-year statute anyway and we've bought her now another two years so once she comes back up to review she'll be in a much better position to potentially get an offer in compromise because she won't have as much time left on that collection statute gotcha so basically called off the dogs for a couple of years exactly it doesn't make the problem go away but at least it it uh, halts the collection action and gives the taxpayer a little bit of time to regroup. And in her case, you know, she uh, had some assets she was going to try to sell. She was going to try to move into a less expensive house. She had some things that she was gotcha. going to try to take care of so that she was in a better position to be able to handle the tax back tax debt. Hey, I just got a text from my friend in Maysville. He says he needs one of those CNCs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he says something about they're going to take my truck. I, I don't I don't know. He mm -hmm. has several, I guess. I, I don't really know. But you mentioned penalties. Penalties can be a, can be uh, what's what's the right word abated is that is, is that the that's probably the wrong word. Well, penalties you know they add up quickly. They can go away though. And they can. Uh, there are a couple of options that can be looked at for penalty abatement or penalty reduction. There's something called a first time penalty abatement, which is kind of like a get out of jail free card. That if the taxpayer has a good record prior to the year that penalties were assessed then we can often get those penalties abated under a first-time abatement. And then there's something called a reasonable cause abatement. So if the taxpayer can show that there was a justifiable reason for not filing their taxes or not paying on time, maybe they had a medical situation or a death in the family. or Life-changing event. Life-changing event. Uh, oftentimes we can get the IRS to abate uh, penalties there. Uh, and if the client... You know, doesn't qualify for a reasonable cause or first time, then um, not a whole lot we can do, but that's kind of your two options there. We did have a client that we worked with that had $9,000 in penalties on a back tax assessment. She had late filing and late paying penalties, and it added up to $9,000. We were able to get those abated, and we were able to reduce her tax debt by that $9,000, which nice. was definitely a win. Uh, Absolutely. It, it helped her get that back tax debt paid off much quicker than if she had to pay those penalties yeah i just got another text from the friend in maysville he said they're gonna take my house <laughs> can they do that well in most cases the answer to that is no now if you have a back tax liability the irs oftentimes will file a lien against your house but that's kind of just to put them in a collateral position. They have your house as collateral, so you're not able to sell that house or refinance that house without your tax debt being paid off first. But normally they won't come in and seize your property. They won't take your house. That's one of the reasons, though, that when you get those IRS letters, you want to respond. You want to communicate with the IRS. You want to uh, get that taken care of so you don't have those things hanging over your head. Oftentimes the IRS will levy a bank account or they will garnish your wages. And even if you're a 1099 contractor, they can put a garnishment against whoever is paying your 1099 income. So if you ignore those letters, usually they won't come take your house, but they will uh, access the money in your bank account or possibly your wages. So that's something you always need to keep in mind that they could come in and do those things. And you never want it to go that far. So that's why it's important to go ahead and, and do something when you get those IRS letters. Go ahead and be proactive and take care of the situation. So. The, the levying the bank account, uh, the garnishments, uh, possibly putting liens on your home, that doesn't happen overnight. That That is basic, basic neglect on the tax, taxpayer's part. Well, yeah, I, mean, I didn't pay my taxes today. They're not going to. They're not going to put a lien on my property tomorrow. Well, yeah, technically, if you owe more than ten thousand dollars, a lien automatically goes in place. That just automatically. Oh, absolutely, to as to it should. The IRS's production, but, but as far as to that levies, point, but as far as levies are concerned, and them coming after your money in your bank account or garnishing your paycheck, that is a process that's kind of a last ditch effort to get your attention. I got you. I got you. When you don't answer the door when they show up. 
Right. Well, when you're not yeah. answering the letters and, and you're not responding back to the notices that you get, then that's where sometimes the case can end up. How serious is that, though, when someone starts showing up at your door? Hi, I'm Joe with the IRS. I mean, that, that's that's pretty serious. That is pretty serious at that point. Usually by that time, you've received a series of five different letters uh, about the te- back tax debt. And if you don't respond to those letters, then they can send a, an agent out to your house to uh, talk to you about getting something set up to take care of the back tax all this goes on this is why folks we have a professional like Jacqueline to handle these things for us it's not just uh, tax law and the laws that change but it's it's a process and it's representation Uh, I I've heard all the the late night commercials and the jingles on the radio uh, but quite honestly you you go to a website you call a 1-800 number you're dealing with someone possibly on the other side of the world well, you are. and you, But you're local. Yeah. You're right here in town. And normally when you call one of the national companies, you're going to speak with a commission salesperson, not a CPA or an enrolled agent. So you're going to... How, how is that possible? There's regulation against that, isn't there? Well, yes and no. Oh. These salespeople can't make any representation to you. They're not supposed to make any representation to you as far as tax law, but it, oftentimes they do. They'll tell you you qualify for an offer and compromise without even looking at your financial situation to know if you do or not. So oftentimes you'll get some misleading information from those salespeople, which can be an issue. Another issue with working with somebody local, we've talked a lot about the importance of the compliance piece of keeping those tax returns filed and up to date and estimated taxes and doing tax planning to reduce the amounts that you owe you're not going to get compliance from one of these national companies. They're going to help you get the back tax debt settled, but then they're not going to be there to help you through the compliance. Then off you go. Exactly. And that's compliance going forward. That's compliance going forward because if the IRS accepts an offer in compromise, they require you to be in compliance for five years. And if you don't file during that period or if you have a tax debt that you can't pay, then they will rescind that offer and it will go back to the original amount that you owed before the offer was accepted, plus the penalties and interest. So that's a key piece to an offer and compromise is you have to stay compliant for at least that five-year period. But it's not just the old taxes and penalties. It's all the time from then to now. They yes. reassess the penalties and the taxes. Yes, yes. Like the compromise, the offer, whatever, never existed. Right. Basically, they say they revoke it, and it goes back to where you were, and everything is recalculated as if you never to had that current offer day. To current exactly. day. Wow, that's, that's huge. And then the same thing is true on an installment agreement. If you uh, end up with a tax debt that you can't pay in a year after an installment agreement is set up, then the IRS can basically nullify that installment agreement. So it's very important that you handle the compliance piece. And we're kind of back to not putting a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. You need to uh, be able to fix the problem going forward so you're not digging a bigger hole uh, each and every year that you just ultimately can't get out of. Um, now, this this is something that you, you truly need to work with a, with a professional person. Well, you do. It's important to work with someone who knows, first of all, what the IRS will and won't do. They know what your options are. They know what you truly qualify for. The process. The process, Exactly. And that they know how to fill out those collection information statements to the best of your advantage. And um, I'm going to be honest with you, not all accountants do this type of work. Uh, It's very time-consuming. It's very tedious. And a lot of of accounting firms, they don't offer resolution work because of that. You you spend a lot of time on the phone with the IRS, don't you? I do spend a lot of time on the phone with the IRS. And you're representing taxpayers. Yes. That's very important. It is important, and you know that you get the kind of a peace of mind there as well when you hire a tax professional because when a, they, at least a local one, yeah, you like get, yourself, right? Because once that power of attorney goes in place, and the IRS has to contact me and talk to me about the tax problem, they can't go through me and talk directly to the taxpayer. So it's kind of like having a lawyer. So they, they up can't for you. show up at your front door anymore, right? As long as uh, I am answering their questions and I am answering their calls, and yes, there's, they don't won't show up at the tax. Well, there is a thing sometimes volunteering too much information. I've known from past shows we've done. Sometimes your clients or taxpayers can sometimes say things they shouldn't or don't mean to or just flat out shouldn't. Right, and you know, oftentimes the IRS will ask leading questions and the taxpayer doesn't realize what they're really looking for and sometimes their answers can actually get them in more trouble than it helps. Let me guess, the, the, who, when, you, when you place a phone call 
to the IRS, whoever that representative is on the other end, is a trained professional to ask you questions. Right. And they do it every day, hour after hour, call after call. That's true, and especially anybody in the collections division. They are trained They're on quote exactly unquote, what good they at it. do. Exactly. Wow. And, and the, the, the poor taxpayer, in their lifetime, they call the IRS once or twice. Hopefully none. <laughs> yeah, hopefully <laughs> but, but never. One, but once or twice, and they're talking to a trained professional who does this every day. It just the, it doesn't seem fair. Well, yeah, the taxpayer is definitely at a disadvantage there, and that's another good reason to have a tax professional in, in place because we know what questions they're going to ask. We know why they're going to ask those questions, and we know how to answer those questions to. And you do it every day. Exactly. And if it's a situation, you know, where it's a question we need some clarification on, it's real easy for us to be able to say, well, we'll have to get that information and get back to you, as opposed to the taxpayer being put on the spot and having to answer something that they're not 100% sure how they should answer. Wow. Wow. So the friend from Maysville says he texted it again. He's, he's going to be calling you. Okay, I, I hope that he does. A uh, friend from Maysville, if you're listening, give us a call. Our telephone so, number at our office is uh, 678 eight six six four zero four seven or you can actually go to we have a new website for our tax resolution business really which is bottom line tax resolutions with an resolutions S, bottom line tax resolutions.com and you can actually go there and you can read more about uh, installment agreements you can read more about offers and compromise you can read about the different options that are available to taxpayers and you can also schedule a free consultation there we'll, we can sit down with you and assess your personal tax situation and help you decide what the best option is for your situation very nice very nice you, you may need a new spot tax resolutions we might i know a guy mm-hmm. he can do it for you okay is that it i think that's it wow that was fun you want to do it again next month we'll do it again next month awesome we awesome. have a special guest, I think, next month coming we up. We do. We have, uh, I don't know, can we say his name? I don't, I don't know. I, I, we better not. Okay. But, but But we have a treat for everyone. Okay. Wow, wow I'm, I'm overselling. <laughs> I'm overselling. I sound like the IRS. You do. No. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. It is always a pleasure. I hope you learned something today. And, boy, if, if you do get those nasty grams like our friend in Maysville, please don't throw them in the bottom of the desk drawer. Come see Jacqueline, give her a call, get on that website for your tax resolution needs. Thank you for sharing your time with us on Business Radio X. Schedule your free tax planning consultation by visiting www.bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. That's bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. And click the link to hear more podcasts like this one. I'm Tom, she's Jacqueline, and that's the bottom line.